on this episode of Edge of the Web. So Google's trying to become an oracle. They're trying to answer all questions. They're becoming capable of doing that. And they're learning. Uh, they, They need processes in place for them to learn. Mm-hmm. When, you know, they're reading the web as much as we are, if not more. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, so they read newspapers and they see all the entities in those stories. And they say, we've got to put these in our knowledge graph. We've got to continue to build the knowledge graph. We've got to collect facts about these entities. Your weekly digital marketing trends with industry trend setting guests. You're listening and watching Edge of the Web. Winners of Best Podcast from the Content Marketing Institute for 2017. Here at see more at edgeofthewebradio.com. Now, here's your host, Aaron Sparks. Let's introduce Bill to our audience. He's certainly been on the show before, but let's, uh, yeah, if you're new to the show, we certainly want to re- introduce you. He's worked as a solo consultant in an agency uh, and, and is presently the director of SEO research for Go Fish Digital. He's been involved in internet marketing and web promotion since 1996. Yes, he knows his stuff. Uh, he's written over a thousand posts on the website SEO by the Sea and more on go, the on the GoFish blog about search patents and papers from search engines. This is very very important, everybody. Bill's one of the one of the only um, uh, SEO professionals and mar- marketers that's doing deep diving into patent submission from Google, and Google's throwing out thousands of patent uh, requests a year, right? They seem to have been decreasing. Is that good or bad? (laughs) Uh, I'm not quite sure. (laughs) Uh, Well, Bill has worked on a wide range of sites from nonprofits to Fortune 500 companies. He's known for his research in in patent filings. And and on top of that, Bill gives a really good abstract and summary of, of what that patent actually means. Because here's the deal, is that Google's actually continually submitting patents that uh, that don't really paint the entire picture of what their intent is when they're building a particular uh, a, a additional algorithm change. But they're certainly thinking about and creating certain key elements. And Bill is one of the ones that actually is looking at the larger pattern, and he's part- starting to put these pieces together on a regular basis. So so you're kind of doing the clarion call for us and, and giving us a, a forewarning of... <laughs> <laughs> what's to come but but bill uh, can you can you quickly give us your backstory uh, uh outside of what i've just covered any other things that uh, uh are are interesting and uh, you wanted to share with us i do have a law degree i didn't go into seo with 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 seo as a the career that i had intended to go into when i first got out of college right I, I actually wanted to practice environmental law. That's right. And I went to law school. Uh, I was a teaching assistant for an environmental lawyer who, who taught environmental law at the law school. And he had me going through a document that he created on doing research in electronic databases to assess natural resource damages. This was in... Uh, 1989, 1990. Right. There was web. So we're looking into things like Lexus Nexus and so on. Uh, getting a sense of what it was like to use information resources that were really rich, really detailed, like the web is, and to find answers to questions. And, and I sort of like that. I sort of, when the chance came to do SEO, and I had that background of, of being in an information-rich uh, profession, and law is an information-rich profession, uh, it, it felt like a natural move to get involved. Well, it's, it certainly is a, uh, a, uh, a unique space uh, inside, of, inside of legal and, and how that has actually aligned you to um, what, paying attention to some, some things that most digital marketers don't see, and that's actually the patent side of of, of Google's behavior, because everything that they're developing um, is certainly uh, they they're, they're protecting it, and they're sending signals 
to to us if you pay attention to that particular that particular turret. So, I mean, you you've been with us for a year now. What's that in Google years, by the way? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. <laughs> well, I mean, there's been there's been a number of you know from the you know from the recent key jumps here over the over the year. I mean, knowledge panel growth, right? That's been huge. Um, your money and your life algorithm changes, right? And that was back in August. Um, Google has multiple channels happening at the same time. They they don't just uh, place a bet on one thing. They've got multiple horses in the race. No, uh, you better believe it. <laughs> so, and, and on top of that, I forgot to mention the quality grader. Uh, 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 the quality grader. Uh, Updates uh, that have been, I mean, the human factor of what uh, Google's going after, let alone the core update. I mean, there's so many things that have happened. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's very important to pause for a second because we can get kind of yanked by all, all the news of all the different changes as we see the, the waves crash on our SEO boats, right? You're paying attention to something even further, and that's what they're planning to do. So... Um, we, well, first and foremost, we thank you for doing that because <laughs> that's, that can't be comfortable reading material when you're going through all the patents. But you certainly are already wired wired for it from your legal side, right? I'm very curious too. I want to know what Google's be doing in ten years, what they're planning on doing behind the scenes now. You know that that scene in. Uh, uh, Wizard of Oz, ignore the man behind the curtain. Right. Nothing. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see what the device he's pulling levers on behind the curtain. Absolutely. So let's unpack one of those levers. And and uh, we talked about this uh, uh, before the show. You you just had a uh, recent blog post on GoFish Digital regarding um, a newly granted uh, Google patent regarding quality visits physically to a location that actually may signal additional scores for local search rankings. Now, what's a quality visit in, in the eyes of what Google's actually submitting as a, as a patent? If you go to a restaurant, a sit-down restaurant, yep. and you go inside, you sit down, you eat a meal, your phone knows where you're at the whole time. Because chances are you turned it on to navigate to that restaurant. Yep. And you didn't turn it off when you went into the restaurant. You didn't turn off the location. No, it, we're, knows we're, it. Yeah, it knows. We're always signaling mobile mobile location to Google, right? So you see in, in knowledge panels for different stores, uh, they have indications of how busy the stores are at different times during the day. Mm -hmm. The busiest time is. Because they're tracking how long people are staying in places. How long they wait in lines at amusement parks, yep. grocery stores, and they they have this insight. They if you uh, get emails from Google that ask you to track your location to help build your timeline, hmm. uh, they're asking where you visited, where you went to, and if they have everything right, if they've gotten the right places. You know, they don't necessarily understand where I work mm -hmm. and where I live because they're the same place. Because I commute to work and my commute's about three feet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they're constantly listening and they're understanding more and more about each location. And we're, we're kind of, um, unbeknownst to us, we're voting with our devices as it applies to the popularity of a particular location or not, correct? So a quality visit to a restaurant that you sit down in could be an hour, right. 15 minutes, half an hour. A quality visit to a pickup restaurant where you, like a McDonald's or something, where mm -hmm. you stand in line, order food, and leave, could be five, 10 minutes. And they're both quality visits to different types of places. Right. So uh, Google announced in the Google blog recently that they're thinking about giving out uh, badges, yeah, 
regional badges for the most popular places, business types. So if you have the most popular restaurant, the top 5% restaurants in the town, you might get a badge from Google to display, uh, which sort of shows that they're taking this quality visit score seriously. Mm-hmm. That would, they would know that from tracking where everybody goes. And this isn't the first time they would be using location information uh, when you use Google Maps to navigate from place to place, they'll give you indications sometimes on how traffic is in certain uh, uh, trips. Mm-hmm. They'll tell you that there's like a, a half an hour delay on the highway that you want to go on because there's been an accident of some type. They're using GPS from other people who have their phones turned on to understand that there are delays in traffic. Right. And it's the same concept using GPS information, cell phone tower triangulation, Wi-Fi access point information. They have a number of ways to find out location information. No, we're you know, we're certainly giving a, a huge amount of data back. And now they're they're utilizing it to be able to Prom- not promote, but they're ascribing certain type of popularity to businesses. So here's the deal: is that, I mean, there's certainly a number of businesses that are that have no foot traffic, ha- have no brick and mortar. An HVAC company, for example, uh, com- individuals aren't coming to that property. I mean, they're out and they're servicing, and and there's no. I mean, there very well is a physical location. However, nobody's coming to it. So, in the midst of how they're reviewing these navigational destination sites, right? They're certainly looking at the the the, the visit and they, they're certainly des- deducing what type of shop this is and what type of visit this is. Um, they, the, they've sort of, they sort of had that concept in mind for years. They, okay. they had something they called location sensitivity. Mm-hmm. They would determine... Uh, the fact that uh, people sometimes went to some types of businesses less frequently than others, like a travel agent, right? Or uh, you know, as opposed to a pizza place. So, when on a map, when you search for a travel agent, they would show a much wider range map because they expected travel agents to be over a wider range. Sure. Now they they're aware that. Different types of businesses have different visit patterns associated with them. So th- th- these these businesses don't have an unfair advantage against the the non brick and mortar, but they're also they're also following another other a number of other signals that you can provide, such as check ins on social media services, geo tagged pictures and, or videos, navigational requests, the like. So. Um, even if you're a business that doesn't have foot traffic, you can still take advantage of these signals and, and you know, challenge your, your, your staff, challenge, you know, the actual visitors to be able to, to be able to leave that digital wake behind them, right? Right. All to yeah. the benefit. Uh, and so, you know, you, you may actually see a, a good deal of popular venues have that, that badge, um, We'd hope that uh, the badge can be utilized in one way, shape, or form online <laughs> as well. But um, well, they haven't actually come out with those yet. And in the blog post, they said they would be coming out with them towards the end of the summer. Absolutely, absolutely. So watch for that. Uh, you're uh, if you're if you're one if you have your business online with Google My Business, right? That's the first thing. Got to make sure you capture that. If you haven't, you know. Something's out there. You better go ahead and grab it. But, uh, you know, we've seen beacons get sent. Uh, they're certainly going to be sending uh, physical badge pluckers or what have you. And they're also going to tie in a digital badge as well. So and we're voting with our devices. We're certainly giving the data to the engines. And the engines are, are in Google in particular, are paying attention to these factors. So be aware, local businesses, that uh, all this is being paying attention to. So you might want to drive some more traffic to your location to be able to be one of those uh, those uh, five percenters. Right, Bill? Right. 
All right, so shifting gears, uh, and we, we have a number of, of key concepts to get into. We talked about schema in our, in our news, but uh, there has been a growth of schema uh, in, in search results uh, over, 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 the, uh, over the years. Um, can you give us a synopsis of what featured snippets are and uh, how schema feeds that featured snippet? Sure. It's evolved. Okay, yep. so, so at first when Google was answering, okay, it evolved from uh, the concept of answer boxes. Mm -hmm. When Google decided to spread out into multiple uh, vertical searches, like local uh, maps, images, and so on, they said, okay, we'd like to show these in normal search results and put them as an answer when it seems appropriate. Mm -hmm. When somebody asks a question that might trigger them, we'll show them uh, an answer that isn't one of the 10 blue links they're normally used to seeing. We'll show them one of these results from a vertical search result. So somebody searches for uh, best hamburgers in Carlsbad, and the top result might be a map pack, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and that's an answer box. Featured snippets are an answer box from a fact-based repository. So the idea is somebody asks what looks like a question. They analyze the query. They say this is a, a query that's looking for an answer. Mm -hmm. Let's show them one of these answer boxes. And that's what the featured snippet is, an answer that's a fact-based answer. They used to uh, look for questions and answers in uh, text right. on sites, and they created a big data store of questions and answers. They then moved on to questions that may have been formatted using like something like a header, and they would fill that data store with questions and answers where the uh, Questions may have been in header format. Mm -hmm. And it's quite likely that they've moved on from this to what they're perceiving as answer passages, which are text-based answers that are accompanied by facts that might be found in something like schema markup or a table. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's structured data. So they're, they're looking for not only text-based answers, but also facts that they can include in those answers from one of those structured data sources. Right. That's the evolution of feature snippets at this point. An answer box that maybe can be fueled by schema markup or uh, tabular data that also has a good, easily readable answer in text. So... These, this was the beginning. Uh, the answer boxes started to pop up, and um, we have have jumped ahead, and we, we're all very familiar with now uh, what those answer box boxes are, and the knowledge graphs, the the knowledge panels that are being uh, presented by by Google now, and feature snippets are one of the components, or the rich data, or the structured data that's coming from those sites, those factual data pieces, they're making their way into a larger ecosystem of knowledge graphs and, and knowledge panels. Um, you wrote in June uh, about categorical quality, uh, quality scores in particular in ranking search. Now, we we're kind of progressing down the submarine here is that that's where, that's where content was and rich structured snippets were. Um, now we're in a space where we're starting to look at the category of content um, the patent that you referenced uh, it referred to a search system r that ranks the resources based on their relevance to the query and importance. So um, it's all about intent, right? To a degree, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got the informational and navigational intent. Can you give us some informational and navigational intent examples for us? Okay, uh, easy one. Mm -hmm. Search pizza around lunchtime. What's my intent? You're hungry. You want to go have lunch. <laughs> exactly. Yep. 
I, I got that one right. <laughs> uh, I search for how long is Harry Potter? I'm not being pornographic. <laughs> right. What is, my, what is my intent? They inquire about the movie I'm itself. That's about this. It's it's what is the length of one of the movies based on one of the books? Mm -hmm. How many pages do all the books have? Or one of the books? Uh, how tall is the character Harry Potter in the books? Mm -hmm. How old is Harry Potter? How long does the movie play? Right. So you is, is there a cartoon based on Harry Potter? Is a is there a Disney World ride based on Harry Potter? How long does it run? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's sometimes very ambiguous, and when they have ambiguous questions like that, the whole answer box thing gets blown up. They have to do a analysis of the question to try to figure out what the intent is behind the question, and maybe compare use a canonical form of a query uh, associated with the question, mm -hmm. which. How long is the book entity name here? So how long is the book Harry Potter? Or how many pages long is the Harry Potter book? Mm -hmm. That would be their rewritten query. We're talking about rewriting queries like they did for Hummingbird or Rank Brain in, in trying to analyze the intent behind the query. Uh, that said, they're moving on to finding out what the best answer is, what the uh, category uh, score type thing. Mm -hmm. They found that a lot of queries have lots of answers, and there are lots of good answers. And sometimes ranking them on the basis of a, a information retrieval score and a page rank type score together just means you have lots of good answers all lined up and people aren't going to see too many of them. So there may be other ways to score those. And what they said was they might categorize uh, answers uh, based on appropriate categories and they might score things in those categories in different ways. Uh, one of the ways would be to look at, and people from Google are saying we don't rank things on the basis of clicks mm -hmm. or questions and search results. But one of the ways they might score category items is based on selections and search results. Another might be how often uh, the pages those are on appear in navigational type results. When somebody searches for uh, Pepsi Cola, they uh, search pe Pepsi.com. If you get a query about cola sodas, you might say Pepsi.com is a good choice because so many people uh, do navigational searches and end up there. Mm -hmm. so, so part of this is also the patent that we're talking about here is yeah is one, categorizing it, but also re-ranking the, the, the content or the, uh, the search results, right? And it's only triggered by certain queries. Yeah. But the re-ranking, that will tend to satisfy the user more and thus getting a bit of a, uh, a voting back from the, from the user uh, based on their interaction of those results. Is that, uh, that's, that's the, the sense of the patent? If you remember back when, before Panda and Penguin came out, mm -hmm. places like the New York Times wrote articles about how poor the results from Google were appearing, and, and they needed better quality. The idea behind uh, these quality score type things using categories is to give searchers better quality. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the point behind it. That's That's why you... Don't just go for the highest, most relevant pages. Uh, you go for the ones people tend to like the most. Yep. So it's not just clicks. It's also, you know, it's, it's the, the content and the answer that's being provided. Um, so 
the, the obviously the, we've known that the the results of engines get shuffled around, but the, but this patent hasn't. Now this patent has just been granted, correct? Right. Right. So what we're seeing here is is certain signals that 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 and, and they're certainly putting together an entire structure of what signals to watch, and what they're building is the type of signals to watch that are removed from particular topics. They're starting to put together the the uh, archetype of how to analyze any entity, right? Now he's grinning. <laughs> we, we, we talk about an evolution of SEO, of search, and uh, we used to have, before there was a knowledge graph, before they, they, they use the phrase uh, string uh, things not strings mm -hmm. so when when it was strings it was just a matter of searching uh, for terms that appear in a query in documents and when we talk about things we're talking about entities right so we search for uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger we might get a Pages about uh, the Terminator or a kindergarten cop. Mm -hmm. So both Arnold Schwarzenegger, except I'm not calling him that, but they're about the characters that he plays, and they're related to that entity. Uh, the meaning the is more important than the words. Mm -hmm. So the intent and the navigation to that intent, and thus we're signaling to the engines what our what our true consumption is. So we've been off all this time with just focusing on the key word because that's not the space in which we truly consume. This was this the 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 rudimentary concept that we were trying to get around. Now we we've, we've grown up with Google, and grew, like I said, Google <laughs> Google has grown up with us. And now we're starting to understand our intent, and that's also, I mean, a, a key factor is the voice search side of things because that can actually be be even more revealing than keystrokes, right? They're developing processes like Rank Brain, which do some of our thinking for us. Mm -hmm. When you do a search for New York Times puzzle, what kind of puzzle are you looking for? That's a crossword. Right. So Rank Brain figures out, hey, this person wants a crossword puzzle and it shows crossword puzzle results when you do that query. So we're machine learning across the board here, but the structure that um, Google is starting to patent here is the, the entity fact relationship and, and, and they're starting to put patterns against any entity and patterns against certain types of facts. Um, so as we move through the content intent, or I should say the categorical um, restructuring of, of intent, we're now at another place along the submarine here, and that's the knowledge graph re reconciliation. You wrote another article just recently about the knowledge graph reconciliation, and what <laughs> we're about to deep dive into the big, <laughs> the deep side of the pool here, guys. So hold on here. Is is there's there's a relationship of entities to facts. Such as medical conditions and treatments. You know, Google connects the dots. You got hypothyroidism and, and hormone treatments, right? You've got that type of relationship. Systems are are in place are about learning new relationships as well. And this is what they're starting to strike out on strike into is how to learn these new facts that may very well not be online, right, Bill? So Google's trying to become an oracle. They're trying to answer all questions or become capable of doing that. And they're learning. Uh, they, they need processes in place for them to learn. Mm -hmm. When, you know, they're reading the web as much as we are, if not more. Okay? Yep. Uh, so, so they read newspapers and they see all the entities in those stories. And they say, we've got to put these in our knowledge graph. We've got to continue to build a knowledge graph. We've got to collect facts about these entities. So we create uh, what are known as triples, mm -hmm. uh, which are subject, verb, object. So uh, you have Bryce Harper is a Philadelphia Philly. Mm -hmm. 
the Philadelphia Phillies have a player called Bryce Harper. These are two new sets of facts about entities that are now in the draft because they read an article about baseball. Mm-hmm. Right? So they're, they're reading CNN, Daily News, Daily Mail, uh, New York Times, other places. They're collecting facts. The way Googlebot used to crawl web pages and collect information about redirects, they're now crawling web pages and collecting information about baseball players. And, and that's, a, that's a whole, I mean, you talk about Google growing up. I mean, now it's hunting for information. Yeah. And it's hunting for information with a purpose of filling in those triples. And, and on, on top of that, the, the, uh, the, f- the fact an entity relationship, it's, it's, it's uh, referenced as a tuple, correct? Right. Or, so, or a triple sometimes. Very good. So, I mean, when a knowledge ref contains information about that, it will actually, it may actually know more about the source of that tuple and, the, and have a score for that originating source. And it can be online or offline, but it's not looking for the keyword. It's about the relationship of that source material to the entity. And that's a huge jump. And they're going to make a bigger jump at some point in time. Are you familiar with the linked open data cloud? I am not. Lay it on me. Okay. So there are databases that are built by organizations, nonprofits, government, so on, mm-hmm. that contain lots of these triples. I said subject, object, uh, or verb. verb object. Yep. Uh, Listerine is a uh, mouthwash. Listerine contains this chemical. Mm-hmm. Listerine contains this chemical. This chemical is potentially hazardous to people. This other chemical is potentially hazardous to people. There, these uh, data sources contain lots of information like that. There are huge databases in this linked open data cloud that are filled with answers that we're not seeing yet at Google, but we may see. Mm-hmm. Google starts using those as sources for their knowledge graph, and they're not using them yet that we know of, but they could be. They're starting to cluster facts together. Yeah. And this, 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 this cloud that you're talking about here, um, they're starting to actually look at the relationships and also navigate conflicting facts. You had a really good illustration on that blog post regarding Planet of the Apes, right? And there was a 1968 version of Planet of the Apes. There was a 2001 version of Planet of the Apes. And you had runtime of both. You had actors of both. And what's the intent, right? What's, where are you, what are you truly looking for whenever you're looking for, you know, how, how long is the runtime of Planet of the Apes? Google is trying to be able to deduce which one you're looking for. And they're both legitimate facts, but you've got to cluster those together to be able to really understand the the uh, the breakdown of information you're truly trying to find, and on top of that, error correct along the way, correct? What is a Monty Python question in the movie "The Quest of the Holy Grail"? Yeah, what is the line speed of a <laughs> as an African or Norwegian? No, don't go, don't don't go there. That's a that's a can of worms for me, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> My my son and I rattle that off on a regular basis. So, yeah, exactly. Which are you looking for, right? right. Yeah. And that's the essence of this patent. These these series of patent uh, submissions that they're trying to build this the structure of how to deduce that intent to be able to deliver this this content in these clusters of tuples and tuples, right? So I start that uh, post off about that patent with. There is a definition for entity reconciliation. I, I'm not seeing one for knowledge ref reconciliation, but Google has just patented knowledge ref reconciliation, mm-hmm. which means it's something new. So entity reconciliation is uh, making an entity unambiguous, making sure you know when you're talking about uh, 
uh, Michael Jackson, you're talking about the king of pop and not the former head of Homeland Security because there were Michael Jackson's in both positions. Yeah, don't get that confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's so, a big charge, and that's a big challenge uh, as we are trusting more and more this oracle, right? Uh, and and um, what kind of signals as, I mean, how, how do we as organizations, we have a role to play in this information retrieval and reconciliation, correct? So we're providing information that Google's not aware of. We're creating things that get added to its knowledge graph. Mm -hmm. Writing about uh, people, about businesses, about places. We're, we're living lives, right? We're starting businesses. We're incorporating. We're uh, hiring people. Uh, we're interacting with people. Mm -hmm. Google's just collecting information about the things we do. That's right. They are, and they're learning how to fix incorrect data. But, but we have the role in 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 our in in our content online to be able to help help fix that data as well. Help 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 by our level of authority of a website. This is where Eat the entire concept comes through and helps us helps us sit in a particular position of authority and communication of our expertise, authority and trust to be able to be a player in that in in that in that field because there are scores that are being applied by Google of where the authority lies for this particular piece of information. So content on on a, a company's website that is connecting the dots, so to speak, and and creating uh, information that can be validated and and is cited you you can be the purveyor of of um uh information to be able to help connect the dots for google is is I mean, is it fair to say that that's a potential strategy for for uh, online content we have people who are experts in fields who uh Now, if you if you know if you know scuba diving really well, mm -hmm. write about scuba diving, and you explain the best way to jump into the water from a boat, uh, how to keep track of how much oxygen you have, uh, what to look for when you're actually out in the water looking at coral reefs, what types of things to look for. You're the expert. You're the one who's done it. There you it have experience. You know. You write. You uh, maybe have some type of uh, uh, background, some type of uh, best way to describe that. There's a. Uh, you have a supportive history mm. of your status as a uh, uh, expert in that field you've got training from certain academies you've gone to certain schools you've won certain awards mm -hmm. you've written certain publications and they're all uh, the types of things that give providence to your expertise and those are the types of things that a google can look at and say this is the E behind this person. This is the expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness that we believe in. These uh, came back from a search. And sometimes Google pops up when it should. <laughs> well, uh, you know, this is this conversation is yeah. the foundational com and is a, a is a at least a, a a window into what's foundationally happening on search and you have you bill have a particularly unique position you're seeing these things start to happen and you're also the purveyor and i got to give you the the eat on that because you're letting us know what they're building and i, I we certainly recommend uh, to our audience to go check out these articles. We, I'm not doing it enough justice. You really did break all this stuff down as well as with a good abstract on what it means in the in the larger ecosystem. But we've got some good graphs and, and breakouts of the clusters of information and how, how, um, how they're reconciling this information. And you're certainly going to be able to see 
more as you as you continually deep dive into those into those patents. Um, I, I hate to say it, but we're <laughs> we're out of time. Uh, like I said um, before this show, this was this was, I was eager to get into this because I love these concepts because that shows where we are in the maturity of of uh, online search as we're trying to understand ourselves and understand what we play and how we play into into uh, a level of authority and in, in communication in the in the online search world. Um, I always try to to finish up with with a couple key questions, but before that, what would be your 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 uh, thought for um, new online marketers that are just hearing these type of concepts for maybe the first time? Uh, the, the 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 structure that's under under the surface of Google and what they're actually designing. What advice would you give for that 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 aspiring SEO that's just getting into the field right now? We're going through a transformation. It may not be easy to see from within, but uh, memory of things like yellow pages as a way to find business, they're gone. They no longer exist. Other things have changed like that. Mm-hmm. I don't carry a watch around. I carry a, carry a phone with me, which tells me the time. We're, we're doing things differently than we have in the past. Google is our source of information. Uh, being some agreed too. Uh, there are other ways of finding information on the web, including building sites that might provide that stuff. But we're going through that transformation, uh, and it's possible to be part of it. Uh, I mean, we've got what's that quote about Uber and and uh, Uber not owning any cars, Airbnb not owning any hotels. And yet, they're transforming those industries. Hmm. That yep. is that is a world we live in now. Absolutely, and we all have a part to play here. We're not sitting on the sidelines. We right. are. We're so we're always giving information uh, on our mobile devices and in our in our, in our search intent. Um, but it also is kind of. Uh, beholden to us to be able to also give a level of accuracy to help us understand uh, our, our our facts and our figures and our entities, <laughs> right? Right. So we do have a place to play. Uh, but but um, Bill, I always ask uh, uh, of our guests, what the heck bugs you right now in your industry? <laughs> So one of the things I do see that I don't like is uh, the web is filled with information. Not all of it correct. There's a lot of misinformation. And there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I I'm, I'm, hate to echo the words of our present president, but there's a lot of fake news. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we need to be able to Think critically and clearly and avoid that stuff because it's really easy to hear something go out and go on in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Basically, don't trust everything you hear or read on the web. No, we can't believe everything on the online. Come on. All right. Well, conversely, um, and that's certainly sage advice. Uh, conversely, what excites you about your industry right now? I can see potential. Like, like I said, that linked open data uh, cloud, mm-hmm. much information in that. And at some point in time, Google is going to turn their knowledge graph to information from sources like that. Mm-hmm. Or, or somebody else is going to beat them to it, which is quite possible. Could that be that new frontier of, of, that, of the new Google, the, the, the organization that actually takes hold of that and moves the needle? You know, it could be an existing company like an IBM, mm-hmm. but somebody could do that. They can say this is a tremendous source of information, and we're seeing how Google's doing it. We can do it too. There you go. Well, um, Bill, 
we're going to have to have you back. And in fact, we <laughs> we love to have like a three hour conversation um, to melt everybody's brains. But you're you're in there regularly um, fighting the good fight and letting us know what's happening in the minds of Google. And um, we certainly appreciate uh, the role that you play in that. Can, is there anything that we can promote for you today? Oh, you can stop by SEO by the Sea or the Go Fish digital blog, and we try to write some interesting stuff there. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. There's great content there. Uh, are you going to be uh, speaking at any conferences coming up? I'm going to be at PubCon in Las Vegas. Cool. I'm also going to be at SMXL in Milan, Italy in November. Oh, very good. I spoke there last year, and they invited me back. So, must have done something right. I enjoyed Italy, so I'm going back. <laughs> well, we certainly appreciate your again your continued con contribution. We want to make sure our audience knows where to find you on Twitter. It's Bill underscore Slosky. Uh, Facebook Bill dot Slosky. Uh, LinkedIn LinkedIn Slosky. Uh, actually, right there. S L A W S K I. Um, along with that, uh, any any last final thoughts for our our digital marketing audience? Not sure. I included a lot. There. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, and we really appreciate. It. Thanks for listening to Edge of the Web Radio.com. Special thank you to our colleagues over at Site Strategics for continuing to, to be able to produce our show here. Uh, especially a uh, thank you to our guest Bill Slosky. Uh, fantastic content, fantastic information. Keep aware of what's happening behind the scenes. Pull back that curtain a little bit, everyone. Be able to see what Google's doing because they're they're continually going at new frontiers of how to understand us. So be sure to check out all the must-see videos and much more insider information over at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. We'll talk to you next week. Do not be a piece of cyber driftwood. Bye-bye.